In this topic, we're going to look at smallpox, measles, and tuberculosis. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what are the features of a successful vaccination program? What are the causes, symptoms of smallpox, measles, and tuberculosis, and how are they transmitted? How was the eradication of smallpox successful? And why is it difficult to eradicate measles and tuberculosis? Now, in the last topic, we discussed vaccination and the features of a successful vaccination program. So these include a suitable vaccine being economically available in a sufficient quantity to immunize all of the vulnerable population. Few, if any, side effects from vaccination. Unpleasant side effects may discourage individuals in the population from being vaccinated. The mechanisms to produce, store and transport the vaccine. The means of administering the vaccine properly at the appropriate time. So this involves training staff with the appropriate skills at different centres throughout the population. and the ability to vaccinate the vast majority of the vulnerable population. This is best done at one time so that the transmission of the pathogen is interrupted because for a certain period there are no individuals in the population with the disease. So this is known as herd immunity. Okay, let's have a look at the cause, transmission and symptoms of smallpox measles and tuberculosis. So smallpox is an acute highly infectious disease and this is caused by the variola virus. It's transmitted through direct contact and droplet infection. So symptoms include high fever, lesions on the mucous membrane in the mouth, a rash of red spots and swollen eyelids. Measles is caused by a virus it's transmitted by airborne droplets or contact with fluids from the mouth or nose. And symptoms include fever, cough, runny nose and rash. And tuberculosis is caused by a bacterium, the mycobacterium tuberculosis. This is transmitted through droplet infection. And the symptoms include fatigue, chest pain, and coughing up blood. Right, let's have a look at smallpox. Why was smallpox eradicated? The first ever vaccinations were carried out by Edward Jenner in 1794. And this was against smallpox. The disease was first eradicated from the world by the same process in 1977. So why have we been able to eradicate smallpox when many other diseases such as measles, tuberculosis and cholera are still around? There are many reasons and these include smallpox virus is stable. So the variola virus is genetically stable so it does not mutate or change its antigens. So the vaccine will always be effective or was always effective. This also means that the same vaccine could be used anywhere across the globe. The smallpox vaccine is relatively cheap and it's easily produced. The vaccine is made from a live form of a similar virus and it is effective. The vaccine can be freeze-dried and then kept even at a relatively high temperature. And the vaccine is easy to administer using a stainless steel reusable needle. The symptoms of the disease are easy to recognize and infected people are thus easy to identify. Furthermore, there are no carriers or animal carriers. There are no hosts, so the cycle was easily broken. And there was a concerted worldwide vaccination program coordinated by the World Health Organization. 
Teenagers were trained as part of the network of consultants to educate local people and supply information to the remote areas. Okay, moving on to measles. Measles is caused by a virus. The complications include blindness because of scarring of the cornea, brain damage and death. It is a common childhood disease, although vaccination has reduced the occurrence in the developing world. So why is it a major disease in developing countries? Can you think of some reasons? Well, these include overcrowding, unsanitary conditions, malnourishment, and high birth rate. So why is eradication difficult? Now, to eradicate measles effectively, it's necessary to ensure that almost all of the population, at least 95%, is immune at the same time and this is herd immunity so it interrupts the transmission of the pathogen so preventing susceptible individuals from acquiring it. Since the vaccine for measles is only 95% effective this means virtually everyone in the population must be immune at one time to eradicate the disease. Since this is impossible it's unlikely to be eradicated. The first dose of vaccine is administered at about 18 months. Prior to this, the child would have had immunity from the immunoglobins from the mother, which it had received during pregnancy. Some children do not respond effectively to the measles vaccine, so they therefore need a series of boosters. So boosters given at about the age of four or five. Now this can be difficult in areas where there's movement of people due to urbanization or refugees. Therefore the children don't get their follow-up booster. Shifting populations make it difficult to trace contacts. And migrants and refugees may form infection reservoirs and start epidemics in a new population. Paternal concern over a possible link between the MMR vaccine and autism um, is in Britain. This caused a decrease in children being vaccinated, so an increase in the case of measles. Okay, and finally, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is the leading cause of death in HIV-positive people. And the HIV pandemic has caused an increase in tuberculosis. Treatment is long-term, but after a couple of weeks, patients should stop being infectious. Malnutrition increases the chance of infection. And as I mentioned, treatment is long-term. So why is it difficult to control tuberculosis? Well, as I mentioned, an increase in HIV infections has led to more opportunistic infections of TB in people with impaired immune systems. Increased poverty in many cities has led to overcrowding and more unhealthy conditions that favor the spread of TB. Wars and political unrest have created refugees who are often housed in densely populated accommodation. And finally, mobile populations due to tourism, global trade and refugees have spread the disease worldwide and made it difficult to ensure that the individuals are vaccinated. Increase in elderly people who have less effective immune systems. So vaccination is less effective in stimulating immunity. And that concludes our lesson. The end.